Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to learn how to paint a bracken fern, and this is a fern I painted in my sketchbook. So if you're interested, then keep on watching. This channel is all about learning how to paint watercolor, botanicals, flowers, and items inspired by nature. Today I'm showing you the bracken fern I painted in my sketchbook from a camping trip that I did in May. And I didn't paint this while I was camping. I find it really difficult to paint um, proper watercolor paintings while I'm outside and not at my desk with all my things. So I usually draw in my sketchbook when I go out hiking or on a camping trip and then I come back and use photos to actually make the painting from. I did do a bunch of erasing on this one because I wanted to get it more accurate than how I'd first drawn it. So the paint that I'm first few washes I'm laying down isn't um, totally working how I'd want it to. Um, you can see the uh, inset there of my sketchbook. That's just a little sample of other layouts I have. And that's another video I have about my June sketchbook page. If you're interested, check that one out as well. Um, but I'm continuing on with this fern painting. It's not, you know, necessarily perfect, but um, this is my sketchbook, so I just try and do the best I can. And I'm using the kneaded eraser to lighten up the pencil as I go. And then I'm wetting the paper with my clean water and then dropping in the paint for a wet and wet wash. So starting at the same way, I start my more formal paintings. And I have sped this up a little bit just because there's a lot of nooks and crannies and this video would be a lot longer if I hadn't. Um, just to sort of show you my process, um, I'm skipping some of the uh, fern leaflets just so I don't get my hand in them if they're right next door to the other one and I'll go back and paint them after. And so some of the paint wasn't flowing exactly how I wanted it to, but I realized um, regardless, I just needed to make sure I created more contrast, so lighter and darker areas. Usually, um, no matter what you do, if you have a nice amount of light and dark, your painting will end up looking pretty good. So I've used three different greens as usual. And um, on this longer piece, I had to wet it twice just because it, the tiny little um, areas uh, dry out, like the edges of the little scallops. So um, sometimes you just have to paint part of it and then re-wet it. Um, just be patient with the tiny little details and serrations or scallops on whichever leaf you're painting. And I've dropped in some color and then I'm kind of going over and coaxing it into the edges here. I've even outlined a few with wet paint and then used a clean wet brush to sort of guide it out so it doesn't look too outlined. Um, so I'm just trying to use my various technique tool bag to make it work for this painting. Um, so if you can erase less on your paper, it's always easier to do the painting portion. And now I'm going to continue the same technique for painting in the rest of the fern until I get to the next step.
Now that I have all of the leaves painted in with the first layer, I am going in with my smaller brush. This is a double zero round brush by Raphael, my favorite little detail painting brush. And I'm just doing some center veins um, lightly down each of the fern leaflet. With the same smaller brush, now I'm creating more contrast. Everything's completely dry, so I'm using wet paint on dry paper and then wetting my brush and blending out the edge. So this is a, a graded wash and it's part of my three-step painting process, step three, which is creating more contrast and depth and detail. So just defining some of the edges more so that the fern sort of pops off the paper. And I'm trying to make sure that I don't paint in the light areas too dark so that all of a sudden I lose the contrast and my painting looks flat. So I'm being mindful of that as I go along doing this. Now I'm adding again uh, just a little bit more detail and contrast and sometimes these paintings with the smaller nooks and crannies um, on the leaves or smaller flowers can take longer than actually like a big leaf or boulder flower um, than you might think. So I just sort of took, took the joy in just going along each little step by step doing this and I found it really relaxing. And so just continuing those edges and then I'm going to um, start making the part of each leaflet that's closest to the I'll say mid rib or the branch of this bracken fern darker so that um, it creates a bit of depth so it's like there's shadow um, on the parts of the leaves closest to the fern where they'd be kind of angled upward and that is going to really help um, pop this off the page a bit more.
so we're getting close to the end of this fern painting and thank you so much for watching this all the way to the end i hope you do give something like this a try in your own sketchbook and remember contrast is the biggest thing for those lighter darker and mid-tone colors um, and do stay tuned for next week my next week's video is going to be on painting the fern below which are the sword fern um, fronds that are unfurling the drawing you can see beneath so that's going to be part two of the nature sketchbook fern series um, so I hope that you can tune in to watch that and thank you again for supporting my channel if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon that will give you an alert each time I post a new video I post a video almost every single week and um, if you like this video then just give it a thumbs up again it helps my videos trend on YouTube and then more people watch them and I can make you more videos hope you have a wonderful week and happy painting